welcome to Geekonomics. Here's one half of the show is very not caring about anything because he doesn't like sports, and the other half is in a sad state of affairs and is thinking the world's going to end. Why would you think that? Oh, no, the Patriots lost last night. That's all I, you know. I think everybody knows. The only biggest football game in the world that Brian has no idea what's going on. I didn't care. I don't know. Sports. I knew they lost, and they were losing the first half of the game. Yeah. And I went, wow, this game is boring. Uh, the commercials, the Han Solo commercial aired. Um, I went and continued playing Mario Odyssey. <laughs> and um, then after the halftime, I turned it off and watched Lady Bird. So oh, was you that, did? How was Lady Bird? It was really good. I want I to see that. It. I liked it a lot. Well, that's good. Um, way better than the football, in my opinion. Um, well, it's because you don't like football. No, I didn't care. The only sport you like is hockey. Yeah. Yeah, not even that you don't even watch. Uh, yeah. You just watch it like you like, are interested in like randomly. Anyway, football happened. Sports. Yeah. Um, a bunch of men charge each other. And uh, you know what's interesting? Oh, boy. Here we go. After the halftime with Justin Timberlake. How, what did you think about Justin Timberlake's halftime? It's like one of the things you actually watch. You're not a Justin Timberlake fan. No. But... I mean, I like him on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I think he's a funny guy. Yeah. I think he's multi-talented. Yes. He is a multi-talented genius. I will say this. I thought his performance for one man was pretty epic. Yeah. For what he did and pulled off, it felt like I was watching this one take movie where this guy it's like was like his just... thing all of a sudden. What do you mean? That's the only time I've ever seen him no, perform well, live. No, well, he just did a thing with uh, his video with uh, Chris Stapleton for the song they do on oh, yeah. his album. Oh, that new the song? whole video is a one shot. That's cool. I like that kind of song. So it's like his new shtick. It, he's like if, it was cool. It was epic. I think the new song, which he started it off, I don't like that. I think that song Filthy. is horrible. Yeah. It sounds like garbage. I mean, it's not my thing. It's like one of the biggest songs in the world. So, <sighs> of course, you don't like it. I don't know. Um, Old man. And Bright I was one of the like, most watched things on Netflix. I don't so. like new stuff at all. So I'm old and crotchety. Um, anyway, doesn't mean it's good. My name's Brian Kazaska. His other stuff. I hate the world. The other stuff, I'm like, oh, I remember that song. Oh, I remember that song. I was waiting for that in sync moment that never happened. Well, that wasn't going to happen. I thought a bunch of guys that came out they were. They were super safe, though. That's what I noticed. I thought they were the in sync guys, but they were just back dancers that it just was the, looked like them. It was a very bland. It wasn't like a lot of whiz bang. It seemed just very bland, safe. Yeah, I think it was a lot of whiz, it was a lot of whiz blam. No, a lot of but, safe, a lot of safe, a lot of pandering, going into the audience. Well, you know, when you're doing a concert that's uh, brought on by a corporation called Pepsi. Yeah, Pepsi also did like all the Michael Jackson stuff, which was epic, like with the fireworks and explosions and, and things. Caught on fire. Hey, don't wear all that gel. What anyway. do you think of the Prince thing? A lot of people weren't fans of the Prince thing. Why? It was a little tribute? And it was a little Twitter hatred from the Prince thing. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. People didn't like that. He, uh... Yeah, and people were shitting on the Han Solo trailer last night as well. Well, people are dicks, that's why. So what does it matter? Did you like the... This is what matters. Did you like the Prince tribute? I did. So I did got I. emotional. And that's all that matters. I honestly, I honestly say I got a little choked up. I liked it. I thought it was cool. I got a little choked up because it was in Minneapolis. Which was Prince's home, basically. That's where he lived. That's where he grew up and everything. So it was a nice little nod that, you know, they yeah. did the thing with the logo and the city and everything. It was very nice. I liked it. Then um, on Jimmy Fallon, he was saying that he actually got, like, the actual, like, those are the, like, what the music that they played was the actual recordings from when he recorded When It Does Cry. Yeah. And the video was from Purple Rain. Yeah. And they were literally... When they played the first time they played the recordings from the song, mm -hmm. and when he performed it live for Purple Rain, it synced up perfectly. They didn't have to do anything. Any like that was like to just to be like that was amazing. That yeah, like he was so precise every single time that everything was always mm. you know perfectly the same. So what you're trying to say is it was perfectly synced up. Yeah. I mean, it was a good performance. I mean, it was safe. Nothing major yeah, happened. No, it was like no there was no guest nipples appearances. nipples showed up. No guest appearances, yeah. which I thought a guest appearance would have really been epic because Beyonce did that. And I thought maybe... I thought, like, yeah, you know, when he played some of the songs, I was expecting, like, some of, like, maybe something. Yeah. 
It would be nice to have somebody else on the stage besides him. I actually kind of found it refreshing. I but guess. At the same it's just, time, it was just, it he's cool. not like a really, uh, I mean, the other thing is like he's a musician, so it would be nice to see him like play an instrument besides the piano. Like he just ran around basically, and they had like a breakdown dance sequence. Yeah. Which I didn't get, but whatever. You didn't get it? Was they danced? I know, but why? Why is there a dance sequence? It's just what sing they do. songs. You knew, you know, in sync was just dancing and singing, right? They didn't play instruments. Yeah, but there was a whole point where he just danced for like, like two minutes. But I, he just likes dancing. He, he just, I guess he just wants to dance. He likes to shake it. Yeah, yeah, it happened. Right, it was great. Yeah, it happened. Yeah, and then afterwards, I went, well, Patriots are really taking a dive on this one. I don't care. Turned it off. And they came back though. There was a part where uh, they were winning there for a, a, a brief microsecond. Second. So it was weird though because I just don't, I, I just didn't think have a feeling like, they were going to lose. I, I had a feeling. Like, I was adamant, and Claire was yelling. It was like not happy that I kept saying it over and over again. Every time the announcer was like, "Those underdog Eagles, they're not. They weren't underdogs. Yes, they were. They were thirteen and three in their their conference. Yes, but they're underdogs compared to the Patriots. No, they, they have, weren't. The Patriots they had, had five the best, wins. They had one of the best defenses in football this year. So you would call the Patriots the underdog in the Super Bowl? Yes. How? This year, going into this game, How? I was not expecting the Patriots to even be able if to play If we rewind and listen to last week's episode, you were like, yeah, there's no way the Eagles are going to win. The Patriots got this. There's no way. So I like how you flipped the script all of a sudden. The I'm Patriots, not flipping the script. I'm just saying the I just Eagles think, were the underdog. I just don't think that they were as big of an underdog as people like painting them to be. Like they were like This they, is the first time they've ever won a Super Bowl. They perpetuated themselves. Right? Like when's the last time they was the won? first time never. They never won a Super Bowl before. They're the underdogs. I understand. <laughs> they were the mighty part. ducks. They weren't the mighty ducks. They're the different. mighty ducks. They weren't the mighty ducks. They weren't the mighty ducks. They were maybe like like the second best team in the league. Like not the Hawks. But like maybe the team that was you're behind the Hawks. Too, you're being too. The Ducks came from nowhere. You can't say that they were the Mighty Ducks. Oh, the, the Eagles. Mighty Ducks they, came, they came from, from nowhere. A bunch where of ragtag where guys. Eagles, where are the Eagles from? Philadelphia. I rest my case. From nowhere. That's not nowhere. <laughs> it's like one of the biggest cities in the country. Did you see this morning? <laughs> there isn't a city it now. It is now nowhere. Oh, Wasteland. It is like. It is now Jakku. Yeah, well, not even Jakku. It's like the city from Resident Evil. It's like Raccoon City at this point. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's a fallout you're like, shelter. You're like diving from zombies and yeah, yeah. creatures. At so this I point. rest my case. They came from nowhere. <laughs> they came from nowhere. They were like they were like didn't exist two years ago. They've been around for a while. All right. All right. I just you know what? You I say just, potato, just... I say potato. Let's call the whole thing off. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The, the game's Patriots. Over. This is how I had a bad. I had a bad feeling going into this game. Because I heard an interesting thing from Tom Brady uh, the, on Saturday or Friday, and then it was weird. It's just odd things would stick in your head. I heard Tom Brady say, it, no, it was po- pregame or whatever. Mm. Tom Brady said, I don't get nervous at Super Bowls anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not good. You're getting complicit. You're yeah. getting cocky. Not cocky. They're that's just getting cocky. They got comfortable. That was a problem. It's, hey. I'm a Super Bowl again. I'm once you're not nervous. I mean, you've also been eight he's of them. Taking it for granted. It's also you've been eight of them. It's a little different. And it was really funny. After and if you the were the half-time, first guys getting in, it's kind of different. After the halftime, I hear closing time. They're playing the music underneath the thing. Yeah, and I'm going. Kinda, yeah, I'm turning it off because this is yeah, a bad omen. NBC's already like this is done. And they're like closing time. But it was just yeah, kinda, yeah, the yeah, game's it was over. Kind of weird. But it was just like I don't know. I don't know. I'm just. I just get annoyed with the people who, Why? as soon as the game ends, like, well, it's over. Patriots are never going to be in the Super Bowl again. Finally, it's over. They've been destroyed. They've been beaten. Like, they've lost two Super Bowls before this. This isn't the first time they've ever lost a Super Bowl. They yeah. lost two to the Giants. They are lost you, one. You act like you're new to the sport. When they went in Are you undefeated. new to the internet? No, but it's just, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, like, over. Why do you care what people, people think? People, like... So complaining what? and being annoying. You like the Patriots. They'll, I'm sure they'll do very well next year, and they could make it to the Super Bowl again and redeem themselves. Yeah. Just like that time when they were up against the Giants and lost. Yeah. Right? And they got up to the Giants again. Was it the following year? No, it was a couple years later. And they won. They lost. Both times to the Giants? Yeah. They lost both times? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they built it up like yeah. a comeback. It was two years later. Yeah, and they were undefeated, and they lost. Yeah. Well... 
I'm thinking of the first time they lost to the Giants was the undefeated season. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, second time they lost again. Really? Yeah. Now who? They don't play well against NFC East. Is what we're can you, can we're you name a, a the five teams they beat? Yes. Who do they beat? The five. They bought teams. the St. Louis Rams. They beat them. They beat the Eagles. Okay. Yeah. I, the first time. The 2004. They beat. The, they beat the Falcons last year. Okay. They've also beat the Carolina Panthers. Okay. And now you're gonna get me on this one. Uh, go someone's right now is like yelling at this the thing. Claire's oh. yelling at it right now. Going, Brother, they beat this team. Oh my gosh. Who was the other one? Rams, Falcons, Panthers, Eagles. Oh my gosh. How am I forgetting this? It wasn't. Trying to think, it was NFC team? Oh, Seahawks, Seahawks. The interception. I was at your house. That was the interception in the end zone. Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler. Yeah, caught the ball in the end zone. Yeah, it was Seahawks. Okay. Because so I was at your house watching it. We were sitting in your couch. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wasn't watching that game, so I don't know. No, you and Hutzel were in the other room, like talking about. Some nerd thing or something. John and I were sitting there watching it. Um, but yeah. So that was the five teams. Wow. There you go. Yes. So, so so far they've lost to the only teams they've ever lost to are teams from the NFC East, the Giants and the Eagles. I mean, listen, I'm I I I, I care less, but I mean, I can't like you have to also as a Patriots as fan. A Patriots you can't fan, be you angry. Be... You can't be like despondent about it. No. You have five championships. Yes. Yeah. This team won their first one ever. And good last for them. Night. Good yeah. for them. It's like the Cubs winning. Yeah. It's like the Red Sox yeah. breaking their curse. And you don't have to worry about playing them again because they're not going to have a team or a town to play in anymore because all their fans just burned the city down yeah. last night. Yeah. And Which I don't understand either. I don't get that thing either. Hey, how but. dare you kneel during the national anthem? But if my team wins, I'm gonna fucking burn this fucker down. down my I'll burn town. this fucker down, and no I'm one's taking gonna, everything with me. No one's gonna bat an eye. No one's gonna protest against that. And the no president gonna say of the United anything. States is gonna love me. Yeah, and then we're gonna white go. Guy and we're gonna go to the president, Philadelphia, and we're gonna go there and take give him a jersey and everything. And he's gonna tweet me and say what a great guy I am. Yeah, but then if. Some other person kneels in nationally at the Oh, fuck that guy. Oh, Jesus. I'm never watching this sport again. But I'm going to destroy my town. I'll burn this fucker down if we win. Hypocrisy at work. US and this is why America, the NFL America in 2018. Um, so, commercials. But best you have to think that Brady's still one of the best. He is the greatest quarterback that ever existed. Yeah, there you go. And the Patriots are the greatest team that's ever played for. And when he retires... He's going directly to the Hall of Fame. They're not Pesco. You have Pesco to realize Hall. that uh, the Patriots will never be the same when he retires. Well, no, they'll just get some other good guy to play cover back. But and it won't be, be like this. Ever. What you got now? It won't be. No, this no, it'll never be. Tom. No. Brady guy. So you got to absorb this. Enjoy the moment. I'm enjoying every second of it. So I remember when they sucked. When I was in elementary when school, I was little. They sucked. Yeah, elementary school and junior the high school. The Cowboys were America's team growing oh, up. Oh, yeah. San Francisco 49ers. Do you remember the Cowboys? How big? They won like one Super Bowl and all of a sudden they were America's team. Well, that was Jerry Jones that did that, the America's team thing. How many Super Bowls did the Cowboys win in the 80s and 90s? A couple or just one? Totally they've won five. They have as many as the Patriots, and did, so does the 49ers. But did they win them around that same period where they became very popular? Because when I was, was younger... It was like the 49ers, or it was like back and forth, 49ers, Cowboys. The Cowboy jerseys and Like 49ers were, were, were like the 80s, Cowboys were the 90s, and Patriots were the 2000s, basically. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So it goes in waves. Yeah. There'll be some other team once Brady retires that will yeah. take over the mantle. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know I'm living on borrowed time, too. The guy's like 40 years old, so... Well, I mean, we're kind of just living. I'm living on. He's like, eating dreams and avocados and cryogenic mutated baby's food. tears, whatever he's living off. Yeah, I don't care what it is. I just think keep he drinks doing blood it. and stuff. Whatever he does, keep doing it. It was so funny over the I'll weekend. I'll donate a couple of kids if he wants. They were trying to make such a big deal. This uh, news organization, New York, 
they're trying to make such a big deal about this documentary he had going on. Tom well, versus Time. It's on Facebook Watch. Yeah. So his six little, episode series. His little kid comes over. His kid goes, "I want to look at my fantasy." And oh, Tom, his son, Jack. His, yeah. Yeah. Tom Why are they goes. Heard about this? Tom goes. Well, let me explain it to people who haven't. Yeah. So Tom says, "Well, if you come over here, and what do I get?" And he gives him a kiss. No, he, he didn't goes, say, what do you, if you come over, he said, what do I get if I let you do it? Yeah, he gives him a kiss. I don't know. So I'm comes not over, quoting him. I don't know. The what kid comes over and gives him a kiss on the lips, and people are like, it was a little bit too long of a kiss. Well, he kissed him, and then he goes, hey, that was too short. And he, he goes, came really, back, that's it? And, and he, he gave gives him a little bit longer one. He it's gave him a long It was a little uncomfortable. Some, very long. But some people, that's how I they know, kiss. I know. Some, some people. I think they're some, making nothing Some parents are kissy parents. My parents were not kissy parents. My my parents were don't look at me parents. But besides that, um, oh no, I'm so not. Each, I don't think there's own. anything it's, wrong with it. I'm just saying they were trying to make something yeah, out of it. No, my parents are more huggy people. Like my mom's a huggy person. She's not a kiss person. I mean, watching it, I was like, yeah, that was kind of long, but I, I, like, that's like, their own thing, man. Yeah, whatever I don't really care. do in their house is their business. I mean, he's not doing anything malicious. I mean, the only thing is people are saying, oh, he's getting a massage, so he's naked, and it's like. You're looking way too much into it. You're thinking way too well, much into it. Well, that's someone projecting their own weirdness. Yeah, you're putting your own crap onto that. That's just yeah, yeah. Just a, a a son giving his dad a kiss on the lips. Big deal. Yeah, I mean, he's just putting his tongue down his mouth. It's I not know. a big deal. It's not, he's, he's passionately kissing him. That's awkward. Maybe that's not happening. <laughs> well, see, the other thing that came from that is uh, his daughter was on the show, and a guy on local know, radio yeah. said something. Called her a little piss ant. Yes. And he got fired. Not fired. He's been suspended indefinitely. Which is basically fired. Yeah. Come on. He's awful, too, that guy. I listen to that radio station. He's, well, like, he's honestly the worst person on that radio station. You shouldn't be calling anyone's kids. You shouldn't say anything about anyone's kids. No, I totally agree. I don't even think you should even say anything about Trump's kids. No matter if you dislike Trump or not, you don't bring their kids into Baron. it. Baron. I agree. Baron, yeah. But the older ones, if they're over 18, they're fair game. All the kids are over 18, except for Baron. Except for Baron. So they're the ones you could pick on. I would never pick, pick on Baron. Baron. Because no. he's little. And, and if he, who cares if he has the like? But a Eric, weird Eric and Dumble. Baron Von Trapp, if you, Von Trump, if you. If he was some butthead, you can make fun of them all you want because they're adults. Yeah. 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 I mean. No, I, I totally agree. If you're under 18, you should Our future really... supreme leader, Baron Trump, we can't, we can't pick on, but. Well, he will take over the regime of America. He at will. At some point. He will. And become our new leader. United States of Trump, you know. Yeah. Just give it 16 years yeah. once the Constitution is ripped up yeah. and that uh, uh, Baron Von Trump will become our Yes, he'll be our next Supreme Leader. Trump said he'll be in a jar. Yes, talking to him and telling him what to do. Um, yeah, the commercial. This is the best jar of any jar ever. It's huge. It's big enough for my head. My hair. My hair is perfect. I got my little hands inside here with me. How does he have hands in a head jar? It's like hand jars. He's got like little jars on the side for his hands, and they like have like little stimulus shocks to make him do the hand thing he does. Hand hand jars. Yeah, little hand his jars. His whole body's in different jars. Little hand jar. It's getting weird. Um, sometimes you just need a hand jar. Sometimes you do. Um, the commercials <laughs> were good. Tide wins. Yeah, I agree. I will buy Tide forever. Yeah, the Tide. The Tide commercials were. Hopper awesome. selling Tide is the greatest thing in the world. It's a Tide ad. They Everything fooled me a couple of times. I saw the damn horse. I'm like, uh, here, here comes, comes the Budweiser commercial. The Budweiser. Sappy Budweiser commercial. And it was a tie dad. The guy from the Old Spice, Old Old Spice guy. Yeah, that was good. Hey, ladies, this is a tie dad. Really good. Um, yeah. Other than that, I I mean, I saw some cool trailers. The Dritos one was good, of course. The I don't know. What did we talked about last week? <sighs> yeah. With uh, Dinklage. Yep, that was really good. Or Morgan Freeman. I kind of, I guess the Tide one really kept secret because a lot of these ads already got leaked, already put Yeah, out. no, the Tide one was like the one you didn't know about. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So the one trailer we were looking I was for, over the, I did get annoyed, well, not annoyed, but I was kind of like over the mushy-gushy commercials. I don't know the mushy-gushy. There's mushy It's like, why does everything have to be like, uh, why do commercials now, instead of just selling the product, like, instead of just selling you a Hyundai, if a you Hyundai. buy a Hyundai... You save children's lives. It's like... What's a mushy-gushy? Why do you have to guilt me into buying a Hyundai? Is your car good? Does it keep me from dying if it gets run into a wall? It will save children. If someone hits me with another car, will my Hyundai explode? That's stuff I want to know. 
If it, you donate money from me buying a Hyundai to a charity, that's great. Fantastic. More power to you. But I want to make sure your car is a decent car before I start buying it. I'm not buying your car to donate the money to charity. I can donate money to charity on my own. I'm buying a car to be able to survive when I drive around town. Sell me that, Hyundai. Yeah. Not your hope and love. They should just sell cars and hope and love. We'd all have free cars. I don't. It just doesn't make sense. I just wasn't. You're like, ah, fuck this. It was. It was like, I don't care about that Honda. Car commercials have gone mushy. They're so weird. I've gone mushy. And the other one was like the Ram truck one. With Martin like, Luther King? Yeah. I was like, why is Martin Luther King selling Ram trucks now all of a sudden? Yeah, that was a weird one. That, I didn't like that either. Yeah, so a lot of people didn't like that one. I was totally against the Nirvana song being in the commercial, too. That was another one I wasn't. When Nirvana song? Like, All Apologies was in a random commercial that made no sense. Yeah, but was it like a cover of it? No, it was the actual song. Oh, I didn't see it. Yeah. I wasn't paying. I didn't know. That's a weird. Yeah. What, was it an ad for a It show? was an ad. It was an ad for something. Oh. I don't remember what it was, though. What was the... I just remember being annoyed by it. Well, I don't watch this show, but what was the crock pot uh, thing with the um, This Is Us? Do you know what that was all about? I guess the, someone left their crock pot on and it burnt the house down. Is this where that show is going? Well, that was like the beginning of the episode. Because supposedly like last night... You were supposed to leave crock pots on! I guess, well, I guess it like... Sue them! I guess it like shocked or like there was a... Wait, a, is this true? Or is this a show? It was a TV show. Oh, right. It was an NBC show. I know. People talk about this show, but it's... People talk about the show. But I guess last night, like, they've been... It sounds like the Building up plot. to rele- revealing how Milo Vitamilia's character dies in the show. And the crock pot was on. So, they, that was in the promo, was this, the house catches on fire and he's, like, trapped in the house. So they tried to, like, perpetuate that was what was the thing that kills him. So, I didn't watch the show. I never watched the show. Yeah, I don't watch. Really so, Let's I happened to flip watch. back to the show because I was seeing if the Super Bowl was still on, if they were still like doing the celebration stuff. But the show was on. So that's the scene where he's caught in the fire in the middle of the house. Yeah. And he cr- he, so he, he escapes. Crack, he gets everyone out of the house. The the daughter and the son and the wife lowers him down with a bed sheet over the the porch. Because that's, you know, because he's a superhuman. He wasn't heroes, after all. So then the dog starts barking. And so the daughter starts flipping out the dogs in the house. And the house is on fire. Oh, God. So he goes back in the house. So stupid. He goes back in the house to get the dog. Uh-huh. And the window he goes in, like, almost instantaneously starts a fire. Comes through the window. So the whole house is burning down. So they think he's dead in the house. So they're like bawling their eyes out, crying. The music starts swelling. And then all of a sudden, the front door swings open, and he comes out of the smoke with the dog in a pillowcase full of stuff. And he survives that. So I guess that was like, I guess there was like things, like he kept teasing his death, I guess, during the episode. Oh, I thought the, so the crock pot started the fire? I guess, I have no idea. I really didn't pay attention. All right. But the one thing like they didn't, Explain it is, or I didn't stay long enough to figure it out, is that not only did he save the dog in this, like, not even three minutes, he was able to run around the house and find all the photo albums, throw them into a bed, a pillowcase, and save all the photo albums. Yeah, usually there's in one place. Most but people. do they, that like the thing you think of when you're trying to escape your house? Like, get the photo albums. I think people want photo albums. It was also in the 70s that, that, or 80s when that took place. Yeah, I guess back then you had photo albums. Yeah, now everything's Now I don't cloud. even have a photo album. As long as you save your phone, you have yeah, pretty much photo everything. Album, you could get everything off the cloud. Yeah, you, you're pretty much safe, which yeah, is good. The cloud, saving people from running back into a burning house since yeah. 1990. I'm glad he saved the crockpot, too. You can save the crock pot. You save the dog. Yeah, the dog. Which may might have been named crock pot. Yeah, that crock pot. Crock pot. Who named the dog crock pot? He was a drug addict dog. Mm. So he's doing crack. So did you watch your puppy bowl? I know you're a huge fan of the puppy bowl. Watch puppy bowl. I didn't watch. I watched. Did you watch the kitten bowl? bowl? I watched them both. Watch kitten bowl at noon, and the puppy bowl is at three. 
We kept re-airing it, though. Yeah, I know. I yeah. know. I had it on in the kitchen. I had yeah. it on. Um, and I like to know, though, because I know it was the end of the show they were showing because we had to watch a little bit of the Puppy Bowl. And I saw the tail end of it. Puppy Bowl is real good. And they do the thing where they say who, uh, like, all these dogs got adopted. Yeah, that's cool. Like, how do you know that these dogs are going to be in the Puppy Bowl and you can adopt them? Because it's all pre-done. It's not like I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, how do you know? What do you mean? Like, how do they know that these dogs they adopted were Puppy Bowl dogs? Do they put them online earlier in the year? Like, these dogs have been drafted to be in the Puppy Bowl. I, this is what is I have a, to... Is there a Puppy Bowl draft surmise, that I don't know about? Mark, this is what I have to surmise, how this is, works. Why don't they air the Puppy Bowl draft? Last year, know. last year, they had these dogs we decided to that they these rescued. They decided to dogs. They had the event last year sometime. They mm. recorded it all in one day. Then they, they got adopted, mm. and then they could give you a before... The bowl and after the bowl because during they would, <laughs> they would introduce one dog and they would give you the whole history of the dog yeah. and they come back yeah. and they do that from almost every freaking dog yeah. um, and then you would talk about them being adopted so this was probably all pre done last year and it was funny because it just seems weird though it's like how would you like was it Allison Sweeney and um, Superman hosting or were they doing the kitten bowl? They did the kitten bowl. Dean Kane. Dean Kane and Austin Sweeney were oh doing boy. the um kitten bowl. Wow. I don't I don't know if they had any big celebrities for the puppy bowl. I don't think so. No, it was just a, like a random sports announcer. They had the ref and they had the sloth. Um No sloth this year. Yeah, there was a sloth. Was there a sloth this year? There was a sloth this year. I don't know. Um But it was just kinda like okay. I don't know. It was kinda strange. It's not live, Mark. I know, but I was like how do you know these dogs were the ones I that... I just told like, you. They did it all last year, I'm well, I know, sure. but I'm saying, but, like, do you get, like... When you adopt the dog, it was like, this dog was in the puppy bowl. <gasps> probably. Like puppy bowl dog. They probably probably knew. Yeah. Maybe the dog was adopted, and they said, we want the dog to come back to be part of the puppy bowl. That would make more sense. Yeah. Or if there's a puppy bowl draft. They should, rec- they should show that on... I think the dogs with the most pathetic planet. stories automatically go in the puppy bowl. <laughs> You notice that they were really sad. Skipper was stories. left on the side of the road when he was born. Oh, the most heart wrenching story I are saw. Are they really story? Are they real stories? Or they just kind of just like they boosted up for television. No, it's a real story. It's a real story. He's run to litter, but he's come no. back and fought his way to be the best this puppy is, dog in the world. In New Mexico, there is this gigantic landfill where pe- homeless people live, mm. and um, there, there is these animal rescuers who drive into this landfill and they know where all these people kind of make yeah, their own residence and they find people it's like the people from uh, walking dead there live in the garbage they're bored dude uh, they have no place to be so they find these well, it's like walking dead they have the yeah they, they find these dump. poor people with animals and they say listen we gotta we gotta if take this puppies, dog in give them to us because we got the puppy bull we we'll get rid of them. Yeah. We got to have <laughs> these animals because they're gotta, not going to survive. We got, the, we got the puppy bowl and we're short about three or four puppies. You guys got any left over here to dump? And they usually eat them when they run out of food. Well, why wouldn't you? No, I'm just kidding. They don't they're eat They're delicacies in Hong Kong. You know, I've seen some sad stuff. Just going into New York, there's people living on the streets and they have animals. And I remember seeing this woman who literally, I'm not kidding you, had a kitty litter box. This is on the side of a busy street. Mm. She's sleeping. Why do you need a kitty litter box if you have a cat and it's outside? D- she had four or five cats all around her. Why do you poop outside? It's outside. You're in the middle of the street. I, I don't know, Mark. I don't Why know. Why would you have a kitty litter? And then you, I saw a guy with That two- seems like a bad option. If you're homeless, just saying, if I was homeless. I, I know. And I had cats. I've given would you waste some... money on kitty litter, or would you waste money on feeding yourself? You know what it is. Cats like to dig, and you're in the middle of a concrete jungle. There is no place for the cats to dig. Let them go wander off and dig somewhere. They'll do- get hit by a car. Yeah, well. I'm just saying, it's very sad. I'm a big sad. cat guy, so it's kind of hard I love cats. for me to... It's just very sad. And I saw people with dogs, too. What do you do? What do you do? On to more positive things. Yeah, because that really got sad and depressing. Thanks, Brian. I'm just letting you know. Thanks for bringing is. down the world. Hey, just letting you know how it is. Thanks for bringing us down. We're like, I wasn't sad enough. The Patriots lost. Give me some more sad news. Oh, I can. I saw homeless people. And... I saw um, uh, Molly's game. Great movie because I didn't know it was based on a real person who started a gambling ring. Yes. 
A what? celebrity gambling ring at that. Well, in the movie, Michael Sarah plays Mr. X, uh-huh. and they make some references to who he could be in real life. Better X. So I looked. We uh, we looked online on Google. It's an actual person. Toby Maguire. Now it is said that Toby Maguire was a complete. He was fantastic gambler. Yes. He was a horrible tipper yes and he was a big sore loser and a bad actor and um oh sorry he would Worst he, Spider-Man he ever. would tease at giving uh molly the woman who was running it a big tip and he would say stuff like um like like make some animal noises or i'm not going to tip you like just the being demeaning and she she didn't she she thought he was an asshole um, well, it's Tom McGuire. He is kind of an asshole. And I remember to- maybe he was just maybe he just had the symbiote. Toby McGuire, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck. Um, well, there were swingers. That's why. There's a few others. They were all part of this celeb- mm. this uh, underground uh, mm. a poker ring. Yeah. Well, Brad Pitt. They did that in Ocean's. Was it Ocean's Eleven? Remember they did that where Brad Pitt was like running the celebrity underground thing, and that was kind of loosely based on that story. Yeah, but it's a good movie. Yeah. And uh, Jessica Chastain was very good. She's a she's a great actress. She's like she is an actress, Mark. She I said a great is, actress. Actually. She is a great actress. I didn't um, say she was an actress. I said she was a great actress. And she's an actress. She is not only is she an actor. She's an actress. She's an actress. So we saw the trailer that me and you've been bitching the teaser that we haven't seen. That they've been holding hostage. For weeks now, we knew it had to come Super Bowl. I said it had to. We, we said last week it had to be the Super Bowl or, Black or it was going to be during Black Panther. But and we were right on one of them. We were right on one of them. Um, they didn't say anything. They didn't say there's any kind of thing coming. There was no announcement. Like, stay tuned to the Super Bowl for this solo teaser. The teaser was like, yeah, like you said, I didn't realize it was happening. I looked up from my Mario Odyssey. Mm. I looked up I'm like, what? 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 Yes. And I was like, what? I was literally sitting in a. Ch- I'll, if you need to, you can talk to Claire, and she'll tell you exactly how I was sitting there watching it. The first couple scenes were happening, and I like he was talking to the. It was a part where he's like the, the imperial guy who's interviewing him and is talking mm-hmm. to him. And there's a scene where it shoots like a wide shot, and there's stormtroopers walking in the background. Yeah, because before they were just kind of dark, and I was like, what's this? And then I see the sort of like, <gasps> it's the Han Solo thing. Are they like sat up in my chair? I'm like, holy crap, it's happening. So we started watching it, and I was like getting even more excited and more excited, and I just couldn't. I was like freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh. And Claire's like, I'm so happy that you finally got to see it because I've been talking about it nonstop. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I, the only thing I could think of is I had to call Brian. I like couldn't think of anything else to do. I was like, I got to call Brian, make sure he saw it. Sorry, I didn't pick Wouldn't up. answer his phone, of course, because God forbid anyone answers their cell phone. Why did you just text me? Because I couldn't think of anything else. I just first thing I did is grab my phone and just found your name and hit call. I didn't like there was no other. There was nothing else. So you know, uh, the guy that they're talking to, the Imperial Guard, and he's like, "Oh, it's going to be fun." Yeah. From what I read, and I don't know much about this, I'm trying to just look it up. Um, they're saying that if this that character is actually from an old Dark Horse. Um, comic book mm. where they had these stories where it was the, there was these two guards and they were like bumbling idiots. Yes. They were kind of and they're from a Dark Horse comics. Yeah, and they're saying that this could this guy be, be the guy. Could be w- one of those guys. Ooh, that'd be awesome because that was a great. Those are a little great, yeah, Easter yeah, a little egg Easter egg thing for you. So we got the trailer today. All right, Brian's seen already because I've he's a jerk it. and he watched it when it he watched it already. I watched it another this hand. Morning. Wanted to wait to show you people. That's not. Why is GB and E just? Because you didn't press pause after you stopped playing it. That's why. All right, here we go. I have not seen this yet. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like I've been running scams on the street since I was ten. <laughs> Kicked out of the flight academy for having a mind of my own. I'm gonna be a pilot. Best in the galaxy. 
see how clean the uh, the, the Millennium Falcon, Falcon looks was? clean. And the whole thing is the Millennium Falcon's not going to be. This is pre mod of Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it's going to look like the original. So it's going to look like just a Falcon class. It's like Millennium uh, class uh, freighter. It becomes Millennium Falcon when he like takes a notch out of the, the notch that's in the two front parts. On this one, it's going to be completely solid because that's what he made it make it go faster and put the notch in it. Ah, oh, gotcha. So it's going to look completely different. Than you'll see it anywhere else. Hey, kid. I'm putting together a crew. And, of course, oh, Woody, Harrelson. Woody Harrelson calls him Hey, Kid. Oh, it's going to be great. And it's like, well, there he gets his... Uh, that's how he gets his hey swagger. Hey, Kid. That's where the swagger comes in. His New man. droid. Lando. Oh, man. And you have... Um, Amelia Clark. Amelia Clark. From Game of Thrones. You in? Chewie. That's yes. Be the only person who knows what you really are. What's that? Get ready. Thought we were in trouble there for a second, but it's fine. We're fine. Oh, oh, but we're man. fine. It's all fine. Oh. It looks good. It's, I'm totally in. I'm totally sold. I'm. I'm there. sold too. I'm hoping the guy can there do a great job. Midnight. I'm there. I'm in. Yeah. Memorial Day. Weekend. Everything's been. Everything's been solved. I mean, like I said last night when I posted it on Facebook. You know, the pages might have lost. But Star Wars is always there to make it better. You got the solo trailer. And then the teaser. The teaser was epic, too. What was the teaser? It was. The teaser so should make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. Trust me, you're going to love it. And which branch are you interested in joining? I'm going to be a pilot. Best in the galaxy. So that indicates that. He was going to because well, be... he says in the the real trailer that he got kicked out of the flight academy. Yeah, so they're going to show that he went into the imperial just to get a job to try to become a pilot. Yeah, didn't work out because he was didn't want to be an automaton. Yeah. Your name? I like that. I love shot. the little way they do in the uh they threw the uh original Star Wars song into the background and jazz it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I really make like it, that. Make I it really different. like it. Yeah. I'm I'm You're psyched. Pumped. I'm psyched. Mark is pumped. I'm all back. I'm all back in. <laughs> Two weeks ago, we like last week we were first talking about it, and we were kind of like, "Yeah, you know, we'll see how it goes." It's, you know, people have been talking bad about it. And sure, it looks good. People have been saying that it's going to be this and that, and like it was good. I'm, I'm there. I don't believe any of that stuff because you don't know if it's true. This or one not. I'll probably see more than once, guaranteed. If it's a Star Wars film, I'll see it at least three times. I yeah. Do. Oh, I, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I'm super excited. It is tough because you're filling in. You're putting yourself into an iconic character. Yes. This is it's. But I love the fact tricky. that he looks like him. They've done a good job to make him look like Han Solo. Yeah, I, I think he looks like a young Han. He looks uh, just like, and he has a Harrison Ford face too, which helps. Yeah. It's. It, and Donald Glover is Lando. Yeah, I mean. Young Chewie back. And that's a be part fun. of me feels that because we're getting uh, a young Lando in this, the next movie we're going to see. The real Lando. Yeah. I feel like they're getting you primed. Yeah. Because at the end, they say, we we put a distress signal out to the Outer Rim. Well, Lando is out there, there in the Outer somewhere. Rim. So they it would take a long time to get guys to him. In. Yeah. To bring all of the crew back. I think Lando would be, actually, Lando could be the unsung hero of the new series. Yeah. 
yeah. of the new trilogy. Yeah. Uh, one of well, the Well, he was in Return of the Jedi. He was he, he flying was. the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Through the Death Star. And, and it blew it up. And with Han Solo gone. Han Solo was trapped on the Endor, so. Um, but yeah, it looks good. I think the trailer, I think Ron Howard will do a good job. I think it looks really good. I'm very That's excited. how a trailer is supposed to be. I will say that. That's a trailer. If someone wants to learn how to make a trailer, i.e. DC, watch that. That's yeah. how you sell a movie. They don't know how to make a trailer. That's how you sell a movie. But it was good. It was in the vein of Star Wars. It felt a little Ugh. Blade Runner-ish. I think you That's said. What I said. I said yeah. it looks very Blade Runner-ish, which um, I love. I love that they're going with a gritty, dirty look to it and making it look like old, beat up. It's, it's going to be... Uh, an adventure romp. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Um, no, I'm very, I'm very excited myself. I'm, yeah. Um, I'm just hoping it's as good as this trailer, and um, we even can it's walk half out. as good as this trailer, I'll be happy. <laughs> I think it'll be good. Yeah, because this trailer, I'm, I've like watched, the, I've watched the teaser like ten times already. Yeah, I watched it a couple times last night. I actually saw this trailer this morning. By accident, I was on Twitter, mm. like, oh, it's already out. And oh, then I, watched I it. can't wait until the show. I'm going to watch it now. <sighs> I'm very excited, though. Yeah. We got Westworld comes back in April. I haven't seen the first season. How have you not seen the first season? I don't know. Well, There's you have something things. to do until April now. There's a lot watch. of things I haven't seen. We know. We know. I'm excited for the new movie Mute on Netflix. Looks really good. Mute. We also had the Cloverfield Paradox. Yeah, it got released. Last night. Yeah, which is crazy. They literally released it when the trailer aired. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, they came out that night. Yeah. No, it literally released as soon as the trailer. Like, trailer was released on the Super Bowl. It was activated on Netflix. Awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are... A lot of nerds switched off the Super Bowl to watch Netflix. From a lot of people, from what I heard online, and I will watch it. To make my own opinion, but mm. people are saying it's not as good as they had hoped. I mean, I love 12 Cloverfield Lane. I 10 mean, was... Cloverfield Lane? Huh? 10 Cloverfield Lane? Didn't it say 10? What did I say 12? 12. 10 That's Cloverfield Lane. It was really the good. Next door neighbors of Cloverfield would happen. I mean, Cloverfield was a good movie, so. Mm. I didn't um, see 10 Cloverfield Lane. So. It's good. It was really good. Yeah. It, it really, honestly, it doesn't even feel like it's attached to Cloverfield until the end. Yeah. The whole movie's like. About this woman being trapped in a bunker. Yeah. And it's like Because good. of Cloverfield happening. Supposedly. Don't want to ruin it. You got to see it. Well, supposedly that's a shtick that yeah. they're going with. It's on Hulu. Oh, you can, and oh, Netflix. I'm on Hulu. Um, but it's good. It's real good. Mm. Um, I will see the third one eventually, but... It's crazy to think yeah. that it was 10 years ago, Cloverfield. Wow. That was J.J. Abrams' first feature film, wasn't it? He didn't direct it. So it was not. I think Super 8 might have been. You sure you didn't? I thought you directed Cloverfield. I could be totally wrong. I don't know. Or he just produced it. I think he just produced it. I thought he directed Cloverfield. I thought that was like his big Maybe first you're thing. Maybe right. Oh, let's look it up. I'm supposed to know these things, Brian. Dude, I'm getting old. I forget. I forget everything. Um, ba -ba -ba. By the time we get done finding it. Well... We've also seen a lot of Black Panther stuff going on, which is nice. His first movie. As director. As a director. Was uh, Mission Impossible 3. Oh, well, there you go. And then he didn't direct again until Star Trek. And then he did Super 8. And then Star Trek Into Darkness, and then Star Wars, and now the next Star Wars. Those are his movie. Yeah. He did Fel 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 Felicity, Lost, Alias. Um, he directed an episode of The Office. Uh, he did a TV movie, Anatomy of Hope. Um, Star Trek, Star Trek Save Falcon, alternative reality game, Undercover TV show. So under so basically. No, he didn't direct. I think he he's a producer. He's a uh, producer on the uh, Clover, the Cloverfield, the new stuff. one, and the original. Yeah, he's a producer of Ten Cloverfield Lane and producer well, okay. of the original too. Well, there you go. I did not know that. 
Learn something new every day, they say. There you go. But I love Chlorfield. That was like one of my... I love that. Yeah, it came out in 2008. It was very well done with the whole... Like, you never saw anything. It was all like found footage kind of thing. Well, the guy had the camera. It was yeah. all shot from like someone with a camera. Yeah. That was when the genre became really popular. Yeah, that was the thing that kind of... Yeah, that was like after uh, Blair Witch was all found footage stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that was that era. The found footage chronicle. The Chronicles of Narnia. Just the regular chronicle, not the Chronicles of Narnia. Police scanner was poetry after Eagle Super Bowl win. What? Oh my God. Yeah, look at that. They burned the place down. They really burned the city down. So I saw uh, Darkest Hour over the weekend on Friday. Oh, yeah? At the theater. Yeah. Yeah? It was excellent. Was it good? I was thoroughly impressed. You don't even think it's Gary Oldman after about I know. five seconds. Huh? He just morphs right into it. And it's so well put together and it's such a well done movie. I'll probably so watch it this weekend. There was so much it's a lot of talking. It's a lot of talking. It's a talker movie. Yeah. Um but it's if you've seen Dunkirk, yes. you kinda have to see this movie. Yeah. Because it's kinda like the prequel to Dunkirk. Yeah, 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 yeah. It basically leads up to Dunkirk happening. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he was involved with both things, so mm. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, did you watch I, Tanya yet? No, no, still waiting. I gave you the movie. I know. Claire's the one, I, Claire's the one that wants to watch it. It's good. So I got to wait for her to want to have time to watch it. She's one of those that she needs the time, has to be focused, has to be in the mood to watch a movie. Can't just sit down and watch a movie because, you know. I watched one movie this weekend that... Um, I did watch Disaster Artist. was not as impressed with it as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's funny, entertaining. It just kind of, meh. But it wasn't like, it didn't blow me away. I definitely understand why I didn't get nominated for any Oscars. I'll tell you that much. I think it was a little bit blowback with uh, James Franco. Well, I just don't think it was that good of a movie to make an Oscar. Get an Oscar. It got Golden Globes and Emmy. It got no. a lot of everything else. And then all of a sudden those, those accusations like... came out. Done. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. It wasn't my favorite. It wasn't that great. But I liked it. I mean, it, I liked it, but it wasn't It was like a movie about a bad movie. That was about it. It wasn't like there was any kind of... It wasn't really much of a meaty story to it. Yeah, it was acting like Franco's wasn't great. I don't even understand how he got a Golden Globe out of it. It wasn't like... Well, he did the guy perfectly. Hey, that's so how the, what? That's how the real Good guy deal. was. But that's not like... I don't think that's Golden Globe worthy. Uh, that's what... I could Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman definitely should have won over him. He's doing Churchill. He's doing yeah, an impression of his someone. His acting in that was way better than I think Franco's was. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Yeah. I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying it's the same thing. You're just imitating someone else. I guess. Um, I saw uh, the Florida for... Project. Oh, yeah. Is that the William the Foe? <sighs> so, Florida Project. I wasn't bored. I've heard but it's a, it's, it really a tough, wasn't a tough that great. No, it takes a very long time to really tell you what this movie is. Yeah, what direction it's going in. Mm. William Defoe, yes, he is great. He's like the only person in it that anyone I, would even know. Because yes. all the ones are all they're all unknown. unknown. William Defoe, his acting was great. Was None it worthy of an award? No. Does, does, his, does his acting look better accompanied with the other actors? Because you don't know who those people are, so you're not like as... So you're kind of like, oh, William Defoe is doing he such a good put, job in this because everyone else is so bad. You make... Well... <laughs> is that what yes. you're... Is that why you think he's getting the award nod? Well, he get, he's getting a nod because he was a good actor in this, but... But does he think he gets... I don't think he like, deserves to win. He gets like a better actor nod because he people was, think... Wow, this guy is really good because everyone else is really bad. The main woman, uh, the mother, she is a kind of an unknown. Mm. Um, I thought she was fantastic when she was playing off the foe. Mm. Um, I felt like she felt very natural. Mm. Then she had this f- a friend of hers that when they were in a scene together, her friend was, I didn't think, was that great of an actress. Mm. 
and her acting kind of went down. It kind of felt like watching a B movie. Well, that's what I mean. Is that like when William Dafoe is with the actors, it brings it up yes. because it's William Dafoe. Yeah. But when they're not, when he's not in the scenes, it kind of just like. When she was by herself, why she was am great. I watching this? She was with William Dafoe. She was fantastic. And then her friend. She plays down to the other people. Yeah, her acting wasn't so great. Mm. The movie. It ha- it gives you it's a piece of uh, Americana in Florida, these these uh, kind of white trashy people who live in these uh, hotels, and that's what it's about, and about these kids growing up. Well, in, it's homeless people who can't afford to live in a home, so they they live in a hotel. Live in a hotel. They're not poor. Well, they're poor, but they scrape by. Yeah, it's about this one woman and their her kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. It just kind of takes a left turn at the very end. It's all right. Like, I would equate it to boyhood where nothing happens but everything happens. At least something happened in this movie. Boyhood, for me, nothing ever happened. It just felt like a long, long gimmick. Mm. This was... Well, it really was. It was a long gimmick. Because it only shot it for 18 years. Yes, very bad gimmick. Yeah. And this one, it was, I don't know. I watch it going. I, I just I, I watched that. Uh, I've I, seen it. Yeah, it was just yeah. It was my least favorite so far. I can say I've seen it. Well, it's not nominated for anything, but but William Defoe, which still is a head scratcher. Why William Defoe? I mean, he was great because everybody else was nobodies, so his acting was superb. So maybe that's why. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I think that's why he's getting. And the he's mom. not even in it. I mean, he's in it, but he's not even. He's like. I mean, the they mom gotta fill the, the category too. So I mean, you gotta. The mom is the main character. And he's not like no one's thinking he's gonna win. He should Everyone's not have talking been nominated. Sam Rockwell, so and it should have been Patrick uh, Stewart. Patrick, yeah. Wait, isn't it? Wasn't he Patrick in, Stewart for Logan? Yeah, or or even uh, Hugh Jackman. No, Hugh Jackman should have been for actor. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's in supporting. Yeah, you're right. It should have been Patrick Stewart. Yeah, they should have given the if. Yeah. Yeah. Patrick Stewart's performance is 100% better than William Dafoe. Mm. William Dafoe's a great actor, and he acts really great in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But there just wasn't what – I don't know. He just mm. plays this guy who is like a, a, a supervisor at a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> He's not doing anything fantastic. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a slice of America. You just – makes you feel uncomfortable to mm. watch. It's a slice of America. Supporting you, actors kind you of You don't just... know about – it's in, you well, know supporting but, you actor know, this year. It's basically it's like Sam Rockwell and Sam Rockwell, a bunch of random people who got thrown in there. I gotta watch three billboards this week. Like weekend. the guy from I think Sam Rockwell will probably like get the guy it. from uh, Shape of Water was nominated. The neighbor, yeah, who was a dad and step step brothers. Mm-hmm. He's nominated. I never I haven't seen that. Shape so. of Water was really good. I saw that. Last was week. it? Yeah, I liked it a lot. It's my favorite so far. Yeah, Get Out and um, supposedly the Chip Water. Like well, it's like the front one of the front runners for Best Picture. Yeah, and Del Toro is like the front runner for director. So I believe it. He, I uh, was talking to Ben about this. Mm. I on a personal level, I like Chip Water is my favorite out of those movies so far. No, because it's just in your genre. I, I just like to escape. Yes, you know, like you too enjoy depressing. those kind of films. Um, but maybe on a a level of who we are as a country, I feel like maybe Get Out should get it. Um, it won't, though. It could. Moonlight got it last year. Nobody expected that. Yeah. Everybody thought it was going to be La La Land. I don't think it'll. I think it's going to, like, Lady Bird's going to swoop in. Lady Bird was really good, too. I think with the, I really the whole liked it. thing going on in the world right now, I think it's <clears> a <throat> perfect time for Lady Bird to win an Oscar for Lady Bird has nothing. Really. But it's female directed. And it's... I think she can get female director. Yes. I don't think she's gonna win over Del Toro. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I don't know about that. We'll find out in my March. But you, if you've seen yeah. both, yeah. Shape of Water and Lady Bird. Shape of Water was, I thought, beautifully directed. I thought it was really good. Mm. Lady Bird's a coming of age movie. But do you think she would be able to win over top of Del Toro? I don't think she's even nominated. Is she? Yeah, she's not me. Um, uh, I don't know. It's a good one. I think the Toro should get it for director. Mm. He got no the Golden Globe for Dunkirk. So, yeah, I don't think he's gonna win it though. No, I don't think so either. But Dunkirk was he's missing there. something. It was great. 
But it was just missing emotion. It was missing an attachment to a character. You you know, I never cared be, anybody died. You weren't supposed to be attached to the character as you were supposed to be attached to the situation. I know. That's a tough one to swallow, though. Because the movie-going audience wants to be attached to something or someone. And I, it was a heart-wrenching scenario. And yeah. I felt bad for that Irish kid because they were dicks to him and he died. Mm. But beyond that, everyone's very solemn. Yeah, well, I mean, they're trapped on an island, and they're not <clears throat> behind them. I don't know. I just want to be attached. And they have to no way of getting out. Basically. Attached to someone. It was like I said. I liked the movie a lot. I just yeah. there was missing that one little oomph yeah. for me. But I don't know. We'll see. It's re- honestly, it's really hard to pick. All these movies are great. Mm. I like one. I like What's some other more nominated? than others. They're all nominated bad movies. <clears throat> I like sometimes bad movies do get nominated. I know, but usually they don't nominate bad um, movies. But I have liked them. And like I said, I think uh, Get Out, Shape of Water, and probably Lady Bird are my top three. And if any of those win, I'd be totally happy. Mm. I-, I think Get Out, it would be bonkers if it won. And I think it would be awesome if it won Best Picture. It would be. We're just, we're gonna be like, it would be one of the few horror movies that won, right? That's not unusual. It's never a horror movie's never been nominated before like that. It's not really? really a horror movie. I never was scared. Well, it's listed in the horror genre. It is. Did you see it? I saw the tail end of it, yeah. You didn't watch the whole thing? No. I, it wasn't a horror movie. I was just flipping through one day, and I saw the tail end, like, after. You should watch it. It's really good. Like, the last, like, five minutes I saw. And I was like, oh, now I've seen the last end of it, so I don't need to see the whole thing. That's not how movies work. Well, it's like if you read the last couple pages of the book, you know who did it, so you don't have to. You just still watch it. It's good. Just move on. It's not really a horror movie. So if you you saw the last five minutes of Solo, you'd be like, well, I don't need to see the whole thing now. Probably. Would you... If you saw the last five minutes of Last Jedi, you wouldn't want to see the rest of it. I'd still, I mean, still fucking watch the whole well, thing. Well, you would because you love Last Jedi. But yeah. Question. One of, the, one of the few, I think, that are in love with Last Jedi. I think it's fantastic. What's... I know you do. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying it's not like a um, common so... opinion, I would say. Oh, well. People are weird. Yeah. Um... Here's the thing about Solo, before we leave. Oh, okay. We're back to Solo again. Here's a question about Solo. I'm writing Solo. If the main plot mm-hmm. and it ends with... Him getting the Millennium Falcon. No. Oh. We see him with the Millennium Falcon. With... No, well, he doesn't have it then, though. He's but just... we see him driving it. He's just in it. He doesn't own it yet. We just Woody saw Hale... him Woody behind... Woody character. We just saw him behind the wheel. I think the stick is they steal the Millennium Falcon. If 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 that's what he's the movie ends with him having to do the um the quote there the uh, my brain's not working parsecs yeah if it that's the if the movie ends up being that supposedly well, that's in it it is in it but what if that's the what it if does that's the Kessel the, Run that's what the whole stick is but what if the Kessel Run is the main plot I'm in but we know what happens. He doesn't have 12 parsecs. <laughs> I know. What does that even mean? It's a span of time. I know he doesn't have 12. But what if that? It's the fastest is, ship ever to do the McCussle run. What if that's the whole ending? I'm fine. You're fine with that? Yeah. Okay. I would be cool to see something new. I'm hoping. Well, you're going to see something new, but you'll also see that in there as well. 12. The six, we'll see the parsecs. So I think that's the whole thing with Rudy Harrelson saying, I'm putting a crew together. He's putting a crew together to do the Kessel run. Yeah, I hope the Kessel runs like the middle of the movie and we have a different kind of like... Well, I think that's the part that they were showing with the, the uh, Star Destroyer and the ships and the I think so. All that. I think you're right. That, that's during the Kessel run. I hope that's the ending. I mean, not the ending. I hope it's the middle. Or at least the three quarters way in. Yeah, but I hope the ending is something else. Like there's more to the Kessel run. Mm. Like I don't want it to just be like the Kessel run mm. because then it'd be like, well, I, you know. Something more, something meaty mm. on there. But yeah, yeah, maybe uh, we are supposed, to, and we're supposed to know what his real name is. Yeah, because before he becomes Han Solo, yeah. million to one, his mentor has the word Han in it. Or Solo. Well, I feel like Solo might be his real last name. I don't think so. Because Ben Solo. So, change his name. What is his name going to be? I'm saying Han Solo changed his name to officially be Han Solo. 
Where would you go in the Star Wars universe to get your name officially changed? Or do you just pronounce? The I pronounce my name Han Solo from this day forward. Office of Documentation. <laughs> I guess you could literally just call yourself anything and nobody would ever yeah, question there's it. There's no like, not like an administration place you have to go to for a license or anything. Like Star Lord. Like yeah. memory is like, I'm Star Lord. And then people start calling him Star Lord. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like in a world like this, you just be like, like I am whoever I am. Call me Nighthawk. And from now on, people have to call you Nighthawk. I like that. I like that. What up, Nighthawk? At the end, I just wanted to go, and I pronounce myself Han Solo. Now, how would you feel if they did, the end of the movie is why he's on Tatooine? That leads right into... Um, I feel it ends up the movie ends with him and him and Chewbacca just chilling out on the cantina. Dude, that would be amazing. Come on, how cool! So would it like that be? like gets you to that part of New Hope. No, no, how cool would it be? The movie ends. Goes to credit. We wait, we wait. Credits, credits, credits. The very end, it shows it shows the camera. You hear the cantina music. The camera sweeps over, and you have the. The Harrison Ford Han Solo with Chewie sitting at the table. table. That would be cool. Like, and, and it's them looking across the bar, and there's like an outline of Obi Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker in the doorway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you're using Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford comes back as a secret cameo to play or an older self. Even better, or even different than that they do like they did in uh, Rogue One, and they do like the CG young Harrison Ford face. They take. Old Harrison Ford and CG to make him yeah. look young, or yeah. they just use old footage. Yeah. I don't know. They use be old footage of those two sitting there that they have from this, uh, like they did with Rogue hope. One, like with the the X wing fighters, the extra footage that they had. Yeah, they know that they shot a bunch of stuff they never used. Yeah, so there's probably some stuff from the cantina they never shot, like never used, like that they shot. Maybe that's a scene. How cool would that be? I think that'd be really cool. Something Another special. thing that's going to be cool to see is if they if Guido shows up. What if Guido shows up? He's got to show up. He always shows up. Because you got to like explain why Guido and him don't get along. Or why Guido's hunting him down so much. Yeah, there's probably going to be... We might get a Boba Fett Boba cameo. Boba Fett cameo. Yeah. A Jabba the Hutt cameo for why Jabba's mad at him. Well, we already know. I mean, we know. But still, it'd be cool to have that like background information stuff. It could be... We, but Towards the tail end of the movie, that's like, that's like the thing. He's on the run from Jabba. And, at the end, it could be like you got to do... You, you have to meet someone. Who? Jabba the Hutt. And they cut the credits. Mm. Or be like the end of like uh, the night, uh, the first Batman, Christopher Nolan Batman movie where he holds up the card of the Joker. Mm. But it'd be like someone saying, we got a guy who who can help us get some, we get a lot we of have bounty. To go to Jabba's hut. Yeah, we have to go to Jabba's hut. And then, like, and then all of a sudden, do, 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 and yeah. end. Something like that. Well, that's why he's on Tatooine is because he was dealing with Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. That was endless possibilities. Yeah. How cool would that be? It's going to be cool. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Got to love the Star Wars. Because you know it's got to connect to the originals somehow. Yeah, they got to do it. Yeah. There's got to be something that connects to it. Yeah. Like, has he ever met Obi Wan Kenobi before? Does that happen? Is there like the crossing of the paths? Chewie paths? knows Obi Wan, yeah, from, but Han Solo doesn't know from Kashyyyk. So is that like they're gonna have that? We could get a well, Chewie's never met Obi Wan, but he met Yoda. No, Chewie met Obi Wan, but Chewie no, Obi yes. that never. When did that happen? Chewie knows Obi Wan because of the Clone Wars and because of just, uh, that. Kashyyyk, when, but that was Yoda yes, that was on Kashyyyk. Uh, in A New Hope, when they're at the bar, Obi-Wan is talking to Chewie. I know what I'm saying. Is that way he goes up to him and is like, hey, you know Yoda. I'm Yoda's friend and he sent me. He knows him somehow, him. some way. Yeah, so I think that's the connection there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. The Yoda yeah. connection. Yeah, the Yoda connection. It's like a rainbow connection. I agree. All right, Mark. So we're wrapping this up? We're wrapping this up. We're, All right, before we, we wrap this up. What? I have to... Uh, Wish a happy anniversary to uh, Claire. Today is one year. Ah, uh, today exactly. Today exactly. This time last year was Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. The state was the fifth was a Sunday last year, and that's when we met was after the Super Bowl. So, happy anniversary. Ah, uh, 
There you go. Yeah. Would you get her? I'm not telling you because she's going to listen to this probably before I get home. Do you have, like, flowers delivered or anything? I'm not telling you because she might listen to this before I get home. <laughs> or she might listen to this before stuff happens. Well, that's the chance you got to take. I'm not taking that chance. Mark's going to have stuff delivered to you. Maybe. And now if you don't, you're going to look a real jerk. So you better get over there and order something. <laughs> <laughs> but you would have bad sit. I kill it with the flowers, so shut up. I kill it with flowers. You kill it. I do. All right. We're out of here. Happy anniversary there, Mark. Thanks, pal. See you next week. We'll see you, everybody.